So you've all probably heard the famous equation E equals mc squared. Mass energy equivalence. Energy is equal to the mass of an object times the speed of light squared. This is probably the most famous equation in physics. It is uh, something that led uh, and contributed to nuclear weapons. It uh, was um, a huge, huge, just it's hugely known by everyone. But where does it come from? So what I'm going to be doing is actually deriving E equals mc squared and showing that, uh, showing that to you. The only thing that we're going to use, we're going to use two different things. First, I'm not going to derive this because it is uh, complicated, more complicated than the, some of the other special relativity derivations I do, which I encourage you to check out. It has a similar form to time dilation. Um, mass changes when you go quickly, when you move at all, actually. Uh, but not substantially unless you move fast. So mass is equal to your rest mass, m naught. Uh, I call it m naught because it m with a little sub zero, uh, divided by the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. For those of you who are really into physics and say that you shouldn't use relativistic mass, there's a controversy over uh, whether this is the better way to to teach special relativity, or uh, there's another concept that you can use also with momentum. Um, but I'm going to use this just for the purpose of the derivation. It's not wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. Some people prefer this, some people prefer the other. So, uh, also, if I ask you what the force is equal to, F, a lot of you would probably say it equals MA, it equals mass times acceleration. In fact, it does not. Force is equal to the rate of change of momentum with respect to time, dP over dt. For those of you who don't have calculus, dP or dt or d anything is the same as you've probably seen this change in momentum, which is just you know p2 minus p1. Um, we write dp because it's faster than writing all this stuff. So this derivation does use some calculus, but I will try to explain what I can as we go. So momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So force is equal to change in mass times velocity. So that is equal to uh, dmv over dt, and this is where we just use a rule from calculus, sorry for those of you who don't have it, um, but the derivative, the rate of change of a product with respect to time, uh, is equal to the first term, m, times the rate of change of the second, dv dt, uh, plus the second term, which is velocity, times the rate of change of the first, which is the change in mass with respect to time. Now, most of the time, you will have a change in mass of zero. If I throw a ball, its mass isn't changing. So, that means that this becomes zero, and you have f equals m rate of change of velocity. Rate of change of velocity with respect to time is acceleration, and f equals ma. That's where your equation comes from. But, we have this relativistic mass term here, which means that, in fact, we cannot get rid of dm dt. So, we're going to have to use it. So, we want to know, uh, let's, let's look at how mass changes with respect to velocity. So we can try to come up with some kind of relationship here to simplify this force equation. So let's take the derivative, the rate of change of mass, with respect to velocity. Uh, and here, I use another rule from calculus. I apologize again. Um, but this is the simplest derivation I could find. Uh, so here, Bottom times times the derivative of the top is zero because the top is a constant. Uh, minus the top minus m naught times the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be a so one half power. So you have uh, one half times uh, one minus v squared over c squared, uh, and that will be raised to the negative one half power times the derivative of what's inside. So you have negative two v over c squared, all divided by the bottom squared, which is 1 minus v squared over c squared. Here, the 1 half cancels with the 2 there. This negative cancels with this negative. Uh, and you can bring this term down because it's to a negative exponent. So you get m naught times v divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves power. Because remember, when you multiply exponents, you really, you're just uh, multiplying terms that are raised to power is you just add the exponents. So that. 
But we still have this pesky m0 term, and I want to get rid of it. I want this uh, equation to only be dependent upon its velocity and the speed of light. Uh, so we're going to try to dump this. So what we're going to do is divide that mass term equation by the derivative that we just found. So we're going to have m divided by dm dv. So this is equal to, you have m0, and you're going to multiply it by the bottom here, so times 1 minus v squared over c squared, divided by m0 v times uh, the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And this term should be to the 3 halves on top, sorry. So notice that our goal is accomplished, we got rid of the m naughts, and we had a secondary secret goal that I didn't tell you, which is we, we want to simplify the differential terms here, the rate of change terms. So we have a dm dv here, and as you'll see, it's going to simplify what we've got there, because we can say then uh, that m is equal to, uh, and again, 3 halves minus 1 half is just 1, so you're going to get, uh, you're going to have, oh, so here, back here when I took the, uh, when I simplified this, there should be a c squared term, and there should be a c squared up here. So you're going to have m equals c squared over v times 1 minus v squared over c squared, and then we're going to multiply it by dm dv. So you have times dm dv. So now that we have that, I'm going to write this up here, that uh, mass is equal to uh, c squared over v times 1 minus v squared over c squared times dm dv. I am going to erase this. And we're going to work with this equation again. So force as we found is equal to this, and we're going to plug in the new value for m that we found into this equation. So we have force equals uh, c squared divided by v times 1 minus v squared over c squared times dm dv times dv dt. And this is where things get awesome, because the dv's, I, the, uh, for those of you who don't have calculus again, um, d and v are not two separate variables. dv is change in v, so it's just one variable. So the dv's cancel. And then now we're going to have dm dt, and we have dm dt there. So that's perfect. We have plus v times dm dt. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by dt. So that way we'll get rid of it from that side and we'll have an f dt on the left. So we have f dt is equal to, uh, and we're going to pull out a dm, just because both terms are being multiplied by it. So we have uh, c squared divided by v times 1 minus v squared over c squared plus v all times dm. So again, cancel the dv's, multiply both sides by dt, and factor out a dm, and that's what you get. And now we do something a little sneaky. So, velocity, v, I'm going to kind of box this off here, velocity is equal to the rate of change of position with respect to time. So v is equal to dx dt. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by velocity, except on the right side we're going to treat it as a v, and on the left side we're going to treat it as a dx dt. And the reason for that is because the right side always already has a bunch of v's, and that's awesome. The left side has a dt, and we can cancel the dt's here. So, multiplying by dx dt here, you have uh, f dx, which is some force times a change in position, is equal to, uh, you're multiplying by v on the right side. So multiplying by v, the v cancels with the term here, so you have c squared times 1 minus v squared over c squared plus v squared, because you're multiplying the v there, and this is all times dm. And now we're going we're gonna to go ahead and distribute the c squared here. So you're going to have c squared, and again all multiplied by dm. So you have c squared uh, minus v squared, because the c squared cancels there. And then you have a plus v squared, all times dm. 
and you note that those v squareds go away. And now you have f dx is equal to c squared times dm. So it seems like we're getting close. We have force times change in position is equal to c squared and the change in mass. We don't want change in mass and we want energy on this side. But I haven't mentioned energy once this entire time. Where does the energy come from? Now we're going to use something called the work energy principle. What this says is that force times change in position is equal to the work, which is equal to the change in energy, which I'll call dE. And now we have that, from that we have, uh, we'll substitute fdx with dE, and you have change in energy is equal to c squared times change in mass. And you can use calculus for this, or you can use, you know, your mind and say that, well, if the change in energy is equal to some constant times the change in mass, it stands to reason that the energy is equal to the constant times just the mass. So, if you want to use calculus, we'll integrate both sides, and you get that E is equal to m times c squared. And that is the most famous equation in physics derived for you. I do want to point out that this is the rest energy of something. This is an incomplete equation. Um, when you are dealing with a special relativity, there are other terms that deal with the momentum that an object has. Uh, because by this, a photon has zero mass. So that means a photon has zero energy, but that's not true. So you're clearly missing something. And in fact, there is a momentum term over here, and you have uh, it looks a little bit different. But that is, uh, if some particle is just sitting there, that's its energy. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Feel free to check out some of my other videos on special relativity. And now you know where the most famous equation in the world comes from. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, check out my other videos. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.